Welcome everybody to another episode, another installment of a week in Geekdom Reviews, your YouTube series where we review all the geeky stuff that you could possibly want. On today's episode, this is episode 4 by the way, on today's episode we are going to be reviewing, we've got it right here folks, it's Justice League Doom on Blu-ray and DVD. We've actually delayed this for quite some time uh, as our YouTube series in and of itself. Uh, we were doing some things, our podcast is up and running again, thankfully. Uh, you can go check that out at WeCanGeekDom.com. And uh, we're back, and we decided to review a uh, title close to home. And it's kind of funny that we've basically been reviewing, you know, um, DC Comics and, and DC-related products, and this is no exception. We planned on reviewing different things, but they just sort of kind of happened. And uh, it's, uh, I don't know. It's out of control, I guess, out of our hands, if you will. Uh, but yes, on to the review itself. As you just saw, we've got a little box here. And uh, this is actually the latest attempt of an, at another original animated war, uh, uh, movie from the guys at DC. Uh, as of this post, as of this video message, if you will, Oh, and yes, if you're hearing this music, it's actually the badass credit song from Mass Effect 3. Uh, we will be reviewing that really soon. Uh, I'll give more details on that as we progress. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is the latest attempt at a DC Animated Universe movie. Um, in June, July, I'm not quite sure right now, of 2012, Superman vs. the Elite is supposed to come out on DVD and Blu-ray, so, uh, but, but as of now, this is the latest version, and, um, yeah, basically, this movie tries to adapt or, or, or encapsulate the great, uh, Tower of Babel story from the Justice League of America books, and, uh, it does so in quite a spectacular fashion, if you will. It's not the. Let me get it straight. It's not the best uh, DC animated movie out there. Uh, probably my favorite would be Under the Red Hood and uh, uh, Superman and the Superman and Batman movies. Those are my personal favorites. I don't know about my uh, guests and uh, co-hosts and such on our podcast, but um, this movie in particular is. Uh, worthwhile in my opinion you get a stellar cast all the veterans from Kevin Conroy Tim Daly and all the guys from Justice League Unlimited and, and the old TV series they're back uh, some of them are new like uh, Nathan Fillion he's doing the uh, voice for Green Lantern he's actually a good voice but then again uh, most of the Green Lantern picks they've done over the past have been good I mean it's not like oh he's superior to the rest they've pretty much stayed uh, along the same route, if you will, and uh, this time around, um, we, we get a trimmed down cast for uh, the DC uh, Justice League lineup, excuse me. We also get the introduction of Cyborg in the Justice League, and this was, this came out a couple months after the New 52 craze started, uh, but the actual movie was made well beforehand, you know, the, the script and everything was done way before September and, uh, excuse me, August 2011, that's when the uh, New 52 debuted. And, uh, let me turn this right off. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that, folks. Um, yeah, it debuted a couple while, uh, a couple months ago, but yeah, this is the latest version of the, uh, Justice League. Which kind of reflects what you've been seeing on uh, the Neo 52, except we we still have uh, the Martian Manhunter in there. Uh, it was a smart move. It was a nice transition between the old uh, JLA and the new one. I am not a particularly big Justice League fan. I'll admit, after this whole New 52 craze, I wasn't a big fan. I am now. I'm starting to read them, and I'm really digging it and looking through all the old stories and such. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't a big fan, so at least I appreciated the fact that Cyborg was in there and added some much-needed diversity to the team. Uh, so you go from the token alien to the token uh, cyborg or black man. I don't know how you're going to take that. But, but yeah, 
Either way, it was a nice addition because he brings so much style and finesse, if you will, to the team with his super hacking abilities that I'm particularly fond of because I'm a huge Teen Titans fan, so represent right there. Uh, but yeah, on to the movie itself. Uh, again, my complaint with every single DC Universe uh, original movie, it is way too short. And I know uh, times are hard and, and they can't run on too long because they don't got the moolah for it but uh come on i mean it says it right here it's 77 minutes long that you know for a story so epic and grandiose as this i think it, it would have benefited for an extra 20 minutes or so it would have done a whole bunch and added a little bit more uh, texture to the whole thing but uh, overall, it was a great movie, great cast. The picture quality looks amazing. And it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's done by the same uh, animation team as uh, the uh, Young Justice series that's airing on uh, Cartoon Network and it's out, out on DVD. It's one of those great classics. Uh, what can I say, you know? Um, I think um, this, uh, this version, if you will, uh, was planned uh, well before I think it was after the Justice League Unlimited uh, ended and um, as recent as uh, the All-Star Superman movie came out which were uh, the last efforts of the great underappreciated and, and, and the masterful writer known as uh, Dwayne McDuffie and this my friends is sort of like a tribute in my own little humble words because this guy was pure genius and one, certainly one of my inspirations to pursue a, a career in writing and, and eventually voiceover and all the other fields that emerge from that. You know, whenever I write a story, whenever I make up something, you know, I'd look to these great uh, writers throughout time. And, and certainly Dwayne is up there as one of the greats and he will forever be one of the greats. Um, yeah, this is, was a, this was a story that was planned a little while ago, if you will. And uh, I think Bruce Tim and, and Party did a great job of bringing this last great effort from Dwayne back to life. And um, it, it, it was a great movie and, uh, and certainly something that every DC fan should not uh, miss, you know, as a tribute to the man itself and, and the body of work that is DC Comics, you know, it's a great film uh, nonetheless, regardless of running times or, and whatnot and lineup changes. But yeah, uh, on to the uh, movie itself, I thought... You know, there's a particular scene, and I don't want to spoil it for everybody, but uh, there's a particular scene because, uh, in a nutshell, certain bad guys uh, try and hack the uh, Justice League infrastructure, uh, security, what, whatnot, and uh, eventually somebody is able to debunk or decrypt the infamous Batman and steal all his files on countermeasures and on how to take the League down. Uh, member at a time of course if you read the actual comic the uh, methods to go about this are totally different on some occasions and uh, other members were there uh, I sincerely missed Aquaman he's one of our favorites and he was not in the movie I don't know what happened uh, they could have easily added him I think and um, uh, yeah th there's a particular scene where um, eventually the heroes find out you know that uh, this was indirectly caused by Batman himself and what proceeds from that to the final battle was like like hey mister it's your fault but let's go and they I don't know the, the final battle ensues and I'll leave it to you to watch it if you haven't watched it yet uh, but it's it felt it felt a little disjointed in my opinion you know from that scene to the other one it got way too quickly resolved and uh, I think such an epic event like that should have been prolonged a little bit more you know I get it you know there's a, a limited running time but I just felt it was kind of missing something that little extra dramatic overtone or, or, or exaggeration if you will that uh, comic book stories are known for but in a good way and um, I, I just think it would have benefited from a longer running time. That's basically the main jits of my complaint with this movie, you know. 
the uh, overall is it was pretty good uh, the villain was changed it's a different uh, main villain but nonetheless it was a great ch uh, change with all the uh, henchmen and, and, and all the uh, league action the fight scenes are amazing uh, kudos for them for animating such great uh, fight scenes uh, it's the sort of things you really want to hear when you do uh, or see when you do a, a superhero film like this um, but yeah, you know, if you're wondering how does this stack up to all the, uh, to like uh, the other Justice League um, animated ventures that they've done, it's pretty good. It's up there with the rest of them. I highly recommend it. If you've seen all the movies that they've, they've released so far, why stop there? You know, it's uh, it's great. Uh, you know, to have you know, of uh, all of these stories with you and. Um, I certainly appreciated the effort, you know. As I said, the voice casting was awesome. The uh, packaging itself is pretty neat. The standard Blu-ray, folks. I mean, look at it. It's all shiny. Uh, yeah, it's all shiny. It's got a lot of exclusive, exclusive content, as always. Uh, something that I thought was kind of funny was that there's a... Um, since one of the main issues in this movie is about mistrust and security and whatnot, there's a small little, um, I guess you would say like an expose or a documentary, if you will, about uh, the mistrust in society uh, and, and, and how we live our lives filled in a post 9-11 world and, and all that stuff that you already, that you've heard up to the wazoo about. But uh, I just thought it was funny because if you were hearing it and it's telling you about the early days of mistrust and, and politics and national security and all that stuff, <laughs> it sounded like a like a weird uh, History Channel or, or Discovery Channel documentary and not in the good way. I mean, it was a little iffy. I don't know if that's the word. It's just a minor complaint. The, the information was fine, folks. I did not have one bit of problem with it it just sounded a little bit weird uh but yeah one of the main highlights in this move in this movie in this blu-ray disc uh and dvd of course is certainly a small uh, but really well done taste into the life of the legendary Dwayne McDuffie and an interview with cast and friends and all the people that he all the talented people he worked with and all his uh, all his accomplishments his upbringing and and the stuff that re he really did that just changed a lot of people's minds and, and lives it certainly touched me with all the stuff he did and i can certainly appreciate the work that he put into from his early days in comic book writing to animation to everything you know the dude was just a friggin genius and he will be forever missed uh certainly check that out and it's well worth your money uh, I believe this is like 20 bucks or something. I got this uh, at Amazon for like 16 or something, 16 bucks or something. So you should definitely check it out. Not only are you getting a great movie, you're getting an awesome special feature that I highly recommend in and of itself. He's one of the greats and, uh, and yeah, I'm just a big fan of him. So Dwayne, rest in peace wherever you are, buddy. And uh, there's also a preview for, let's see, it says, uh, yeah, Superman vs. The Elite. Um, that's going to be coming out soon in, in summer 2012. It's almost here, so I'm going to try and get that as soon as possible and do a review. I'm not going to wait, because this came out in February, I think it was 28 or something. And as of this recording, it's mid-April, so yeah, I waited a long-ass time to record this for you fine folks. But um, here I am, Justice League Doom, a great movie. Uh, certainly go check it out if you like Justice League, if you like DC, superheroes, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, Cyborg, Mar um, um, Martian Manhunter and and gang so yeah hilarity ensues you know it's a great film great acting great plot cons it would have been a a bit better if longer but uh in the end i highly recommend it a straight four out of five the only things i were not liking was of course the running time and certain aspects of the plot that didn't quite uh fit well with me i, I it would have as I said, like 20 times already, you know, a bit longer would have been fine. But just all uh, minor tweaks that um, while they work for the crowd that hasn't seen the movie or, or excuse me, hasn't uh, read the story, uh, 
if you have read the story, I would have certainly appreciated the original villain. It would have been way cooler, in my opinion. And, uh, uh, by the way, um, be careful watching it with the kitties, just in case, because some of the stuff is pretty uh, intense, if you will. I didn't mind it, but, uh, yeah, it's not a movie that I... Uh, it's not my first pick for a uh, toddler to see. You know, if he's into superheroes and whatnot, there are other series and other movies that you could show him but this uh it's a little different just keep in mind it's pg-13 for a reason folks <laughs> uh so yeah there uh there you go four to five for justice league doom um as always folks you can comment down below you can tweet us poke us whatever it is you kids do on the uh, social network sites as always, tweet us at A Week in Geekdom. Look for us. Like us on Facebook. That's A Week in Geekdom. And of course, let me remind you to visit our brand new spanking site called A Week in Geekdom.com, an interactive sort of blog where you find all the uh, curious posts and um, all the editorials that we'd like to publish around and all of our geeky opinions. And of course, our podcast is uploaded there as soon as we record an episode. Actually, episode 19 just aired a few weeks ago. You can go check that out. Leave us some feedback. Write to us. A week in geekdom at gmail.com. It's freely accessible, folks. You can really reach us if you try, because trust us, if you find us, we will be there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this, is, um, this has been episode four of A Week in Geekdom Reviews reviewing justice league doom and of course a four out of five so i'm gonna close it up and i will see all of you uh, later uh probably by next episode if one of our co-hosts does not appear reviewing something it'll probably be me with another uh i guess uh video game or movie or book or something and uh and i promise uh geeky friends i must discuss mass effect with everybody but i am holding out a little bit because they just announced the, they announced the extended cut this month uh they did this and that and that and i'm just waiting for the whole picture because i don't want to be informing while there's still info coming out so i'm gonna wait a little while and my uh co-hosts promised the two of them manuel and brian they promised they were gonna watch uh i'm sorry they were gonna play uh the trilogy so i'm waiting on them to actually play them <laughs> I just replayed uh, the trilogy for a third time, I guess, uh, a couple of days ago. It's certainly one of my favorite video games of all time. And I, I am looking forward to the Flame Wars of reviewing Mass Effect. So, folks, uh, as always, uh, this has been episode four of A Week in Geekdom Reviews. I've been Diabonimenendez, and I will see all of you laters. <laughs>